If you're watching this, you're probably 90% on the way to buying a Gibson Explorer. I've learned a few things about it over the past few months, so let me give you three things about this guitar you need to know about before spending the cash coming up. Welcome to the video. If this is our first time meeting, my name is Justin and I'm all about worship guitar, helping you sound and play your best for Jesus. If you like what you hear, subscribe, hit that bell notification icon and head on over to my Buy Me A Coffee page to download my packages and more to support these videos and my ministry. If you've met before, welcome back. You could want an explorer for many reasons, chief among which is its visual appeal, where Lizzie Hill puts it best. The great thing about the explorer is that when you look at it, it's probably not going to be it's yeah, probably not going to be yeah. pop. There's right. going to be something happening right. here. Yeah. I think that's a perfectly valid reason to get one. With this guitar in my hands, I feel like I need to match the aesthetic with some level of showmanship. You can't lack confidence when you play an explorer. All that being said, with the visual appeal comes a host of challenges. I encountered these firsthand so you don't have to. Let's go through three things you need to know about the explorer. Number one, it's a big guitar. If headless, ergonomic, bring onto a plane as carry on luggage style guitars are your thing, this is in the absolute opposite direction. This guitar is massive. It doesn't feel that way when you pick it up and wear it because it's an incredibly balanced shape. But as soon as you're feeling your way around the stage area with this on, you'll soon be hitting things at the rear end of the guitar. Additionally, in all my video shoots with it, I had to back up a lot more than my other guitars just to keep the guitar in frame. You would think that an electric guitar is shorter than a bass guitar, right? Check out this B-roll where I put a jazz bass next to it. End to end, the 43 inch Explorer is nearly as long as the 46 and a half inch Jazz Pace. This size has immediate ramifications on transport and logistics. This is the biggest case I've ever encountered on an electric guitar. It dwarfs a standard Gibson Les Paul hard case. It can't fit in the boot of my Master 3 and has to occupy a passenger seat. I also have some weight training when I bring this guitar about because of my short Asian build, and the long guitar case means that the case will drag the floor if I don't lift it high enough. As as if the antiques don't stop there, the case is so large my daughter uses it as a day bed to read and play in the corner of my study while I work. Not gonna lie, the lack of ergonomics with just the case alone is a red flag that would normally stop me from buying the guitar, but since it was an online purchase, I only realized this after the fact. Lesson learned, 
try before you buy. Number two, it doesn't like guitar stands. This is somewhat related to the previous point. Manufacturers don't make guitar stands, or cases for that matter, for unique shapes like the Explorer. With a Z shape, the point of contact that the Explorer makes with a conventional stand just isn't practical, so A-frame stands are out. And while you may be able to prop the Explorer on the neck grip of a guitar duck, you still need to account for that Z-shaped bottom. You'll need something to prop the guitar up to relieve the additional stress point on the guitar dock, which works, but that giant door stopper adds clutter to the overall aesthetic. What I'm doing, and I don't recommend this, is to use a side-loading guitar rack. It accounts for that massive 18-inch side profile that's just as wide as an acoustic guitar, but if you have the rack leaning against the wall like I do, the shorter end of the Z-shape where the pickup selected is will lean onto the wall. That seems fine until a couple of months later, you'll start to see scratches. <gasps> Particularly for the 2017 high-performance model which has the infamous Gibson robot tuners, you have an additional challenge. That control module for the tuner takes up a lot of space at the back of the headstock and it actually impedes the gripping mechanism of the Hercules wall hangers that I use on every other guitar in my arsenal. And so you'll need a guitar stand that doesn't grip the headstock like Hercules stands do as well as accommodate the Z-shaped bottom. In my case, I've given up and just resorted to keeping the Explorer in its case. I've yet to use this live for the Sunday service so I'll update later as to how I set this up on stage. Again, lesson learnt. Try before you buy. Number three, it's almost sonically identical to the Les Paul. Yes, the shape is radically different, but consider these specs. Mahogany body of a 24 and 3 quarter inch scale length, tuna manic bridge, and a stock bar tailpiece. I could have been describing a Les Paul with those specs. Also, here's an interesting bit of guitar science for you. We might think that a larger guitar body will lead to longer sustain, right? In reality, sustain is a cumulative function of many different factors, and the larger body of the Explorer actually works against sustain because its mass pulls vibrational energy away from the strings. I think this is why ceramic pickups like this set of 496R in the neck and 500T in the bridge are a better choice for Explorer-sized guitars to compensate for this phenomenon, as opposed to lower output Elnico pickups. It also explains why even though these are technically higher output than the pickups found on Les Pauls, the overall tone is very similar. Let's hear some comparison tones. Conclusion, you're not going to buy and explore because it sounds radically different from Les Paul, which is way easier to handle and carry around, by the way. No, you're buying and explore because it makes a visual statement. It's telling people that you're confident that you're going to command the stage. If you can get around the problems with transport and logistics, you'll find that there's no guitar quite like the Explorer. <laughs> Thank you.
you like what you're hearing, today's tones are from a HX Storm Worship Essentials pack using the HX Storm as the amps at the end of my pedal board built around the TC Electronics Plethora Multi Effects and Drive section. For those of you who've downloaded it before, it's available as a free update, so check the link. Questions I'd like you to answer in the comment section below. Are you using an explorer for the Sunday worship service? What do you love about it? And do you have any challenges from your worship leader or church leaders? Who knows? Your stories, ideas, and feedback might be very helpful for people looking to buy one. That's it for me. Thanks for watching this video. If you got any value out of it, like it and share it with someone whom you know is interested in a Gibson Explorer. I previously shared on how this Explorer came into my possession and it's quite a story. So get a coffee ready and check it out. See you in the next episode. Until next time, I'm Justin and I'm all about worship guitar.